I think the people at home would be thrilled to see this come mm -hmm. together. This is amazing. Uh, President Day is wonderful. We just had a gentleman on from the Revolutionary War Museum in Philadelphia. We've all got to go right. to that. He said they've it's just great. been open a few years. This is the only Revolutionary War Museum. And my mom always told us that Philip Marsteller was one of uh, George Washington's pallbearers. And he's a relative of ours. And I asked him, I said, do you know this name? And he said, we actually have his sword in our museum. Look at oh that. I goodness. said, can I buy it? <laughs> <laughs> you can come and see it. <laughs> uh, I think in about an hour, we're going to go out on the streets, uh, quiz people about presidential trivia. Here's a question for you. Who was the first American president born in a hospital? Born in a hospital. Yeah, they were all born at home. Mm. Who would Jimmy that be? Carter. Really? I would think it would be earlier than that. So there you go. What about the uh, the pres the only president who had zero turnover in his cabinet? Who would that be? Lincoln. Franklin Pierce. Really? Yeah, there you go. We got a lots of uh, presidential trivia. We're going to be going through that, but we got a lot of news as well. And out in Chicago, new questions this morning about that alleged attack against Empire star Jussie Smollett. Police want to talk to him again after releasing two people of interest who are brothers. TMZ is reporting that this case could go to a grand jury. Yeah, he does not want to talk all of a sudden. Jeff Paul is live in Chicago with the latest on the investigation. Hey, Jeff, this gets weirder every second. It certainly seems like it, and police right now aren't confirming any of those details surrounding that possible grand jury. But as you all mentioned, they want to speak with Smollett again about some key developments. That's how they described it in this case. Now, as you remember, this all started about three weeks ago on January 29th. That is when Smollett claimed that two masked men punched him, shouting anti-gay racial slurs at him, claiming they even shouted, this is MAGA country. He believed they poured bleach and looped a rope around his neck. Police then considered him a victim. Then two weeks later, two brothers who are uh, from Nigeria were arrested. Smollett then spoke with ABC's GMA about the attack in detail. Uh, and then though the next day, though, after that interview from Smollett, those two brothers were released without any charges being filed. Now, the attorney for those brothers who were once considered suspects says that she is thankful for the efforts by police who are trying to get to the bottom of this case. They're tired. They're glad that uh, justice prevailed for them. They put the work in, and uh, I'm glad to say that they're, they're, they're on their way. We've heard from a lot of police work, a lot of good police work, a lot of hard work on our end, but at the end of the day, up, <laughs> as I said before, innocence prevailed. Now, Smollett's lawyer released a statement saying that Smollett himself is now being further victimized by people who are claiming that Smollett played somehow a role in this alleged attack. They say anyone saying that is lying. No word if Smollett, if he will or when he will, speak with police again. Back to you all. That's right. The police have reached out. All right. Uh, thank you very much for the live report. So the stories out of Chicago are on some of the news stations. They say that these two brothers were paid 3500 bucks to stage it, and then they were going to get another $500 when he came back, uh, when they came back from Nigeria, uh, and then the cops picked him up, and apparently they were very cooperative. They held him for a couple of days. They said, yeah, we bought the rope at this, uh, what was it called, the Crafty Beaver Hardware Store, talked all about the stuff. I think they've got their phones. They said that they, they even had a practice run a few days yeah. before. Uh, so, January 25th, and then, uh, then they executed a little bit later. So the other thing is Chicago police reached out uh, to uh, Smollett, and uh, the cops reached out to him, and he to arrange a follow-up interview. So far, they have not heard back, but he's been all lawyered up. He also right. says, now I feel like I've been re-victimized. The question is, why would you dump to a conclusion with so many questions out there? Isn't this time, after all the stories that we see, twist another direction? to hold your fire until you find out the details, especially considering this is race and politics. Right. It's, such a, it's such a turbulent time in America. Because uh, Jesse Smollett presented it, this he was the victim of a hate crime. But now it looks like the possibility that it was a hoax. Nonetheless, there was a rush to judgment. Yeah, there was Cory Booker back on January 29th, right after it happened, he tweeted this out. He said the vicious attack on actor Jesse Smollett was an attempted modern day lynching. And then just recently he was asked about it from a reporter asked him about it. And this is what he had to say. 
I'm going to withhold until all the information actually comes out from on-the-record sources. Um, we know in America that uh, bigoted and biased attacks are on the rise in a serious way. And we actually even know in this country that since 9-11, the majority of the terrorist attacks on our, so soul, on our soil have been right-wing terrorist attacks, the majority of them white supremacist attacks. Okay, so now he's uh, going to withhold judgment until everything comes out. That could be a while. It's a little late. Uh, Kamala Harris also quickly mm -hmm. uh, Number condemned. of people, yeah. prominent folks. Meanwhile, uh, the Washington uh, Newsbusters has got an item on their website about uh, Washington Post editorial board assistant by the name of Nana Mumford. Um, and essentially what she is writing about is she really wants the story to be true. She said, she said, I wanted to believe Smollett. I really did. I know that there is a deep, dark, racist history in Chicago, and if proved true, this would be just one more point on the list. I wanted to believe him with every fiber of my being. Really? Fantastic. Uh, I'm sorry to disappoint you if it turns out not to be a hate crime, that it was all set up. I never saw someone so disappointed by something like that. Uh, Bethany Mandel joined, uh, joined us on the, show, on the show about a half hour ago and says, haven't we learned anything uh, from what we've seen in the past? Listen. It's really frightening to me that our leaders are so gullible that they would fall for a story this outrageous and that they wanted it be, to be true. It, it wasn't ever plausible. It never sounded like it was true from the start. And the fact that they employed no critical thinking skills to consider the fact that, you know, maybe this isn't the entire story. And instead, they ran with it because they wanted it to be true. I think that's such a sad commentary on the state of our society that we want there to have been a hate crime in order to employ it. All right. So out in Chicago, they're trying to figure it all out. Was it a hoax or was it a hate crime? Stay tuned. Meanwhile, in 2020, uh, more and more candidates are contemplating or actually jumping into the race. We're up to uh, about nine. Bernie Sanders, you might as well say he's in. Word is, according to Politico, that he actually recorded his announcement officially uh, uh, going back uh, to run for president of the United States yes. in 2020. The headline was Bernie Sanders records video announcing 2020 campaign. And, the and then you've got Joe Biden, who did not run last time, although... Uh, uh, it was reported that the president then, uh, Barack Obama, his boss, uh, wanted him to run, but he did not. And uh, invariably, Mr. Obama had to support Hillary Clinton, who was not his first choice. Nonetheless, over the weekend, Joe Biden was at a uh, European uh, conference where he said that the United States right now, over our refugee uh, situation, huge embarrassment. Listen to this. The America I see values basic human decency not snatching children from their parents or turning our back on refugees at our border. Americans know that's not right. The American people understand, please, because it makes us embarrassing. The American people know overwhelmingly that that's not right. That's not who we are. The administration that pulled the missile defense out of Europe without even telling the Europeans ahead of time who he is is somebody who allowed 600 to 800,000 people die in Syria without even reinforcing a red line that the president blurted out one day uh, extemporaneously. Who we are is watching the Russians come back into the Middle East during his time. And for him to go to Munich, Germany and rip this country in front of other countries is inexcusable. And that is not the sign of a good leader. There's not one of the, there was no That's far, the sign of somebody but, running but for president. But no, it is not Correct. in Munich, Germany. And if you, you don't see people in Germany come up and rip Merkel at an international conference. You don't see someone come up and rip Macron at an international conference. You go there to express your views, not to get up there and, and cheer everyone who hates this country in front of all these other countries. Well, that is inexcusable. Getting, That's not leadership. He's doing this because he is going to run. It sounds like yeah. he's going to run for president. Absolutely. Yeah, but is it your country first? It Could you have be. done that in well, Iowa? Could you have done that in changed. Delaware? Unfortunately, things have changed. Right. You have politicians that are going overseas talking badly about our country and our administration. And then you also, now you have presidents that are speaking negatively right. about right. other pre it's never past be right. presidents. Uh, Ainsley, you're absolutely right. Once upon a time, uh, politics ended at the water's edge. That, has, that ship has long sailed. We had Congressman now, Michael Waltz, with us, uh, former Green Beret commander. He said uh, there's such irony in Joe Biden doing this. This was just the height of irony coming from former Vice President Biden, 
who with the Obama administration presided over the largest refugee crisis coming out of Syria since World War II. It's just really incredible for him to be so sanctimonious when he presided over such a disaster in the Middle East that caused such a refugee crisis. When you're abroad at conferences like that, you're an American first. You're not a Democrat or Republican. You got to stand up as an American. Our opponents are taking note. In fairness, John McCain did go there a year ago and rip the President of the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it's just unacceptable for him to go up there. He should know better. He said two weeks ago, I don't hate Republicans. Uh, I guess that makes me a bad person, sarcastically. He goes over there and just, just played into everyone's, right, everyone's but, but worst, Brian, worst perceptions of who Donald Trump is. And the way he acted so, towards Vice President Pence was absolutely abhorrent. And to see Angela Merkel, a failed politician who's being drummed out of office, go and condemn the Amer America again is absolutely embarrassment to the German people and an insult to us. Donald Trump is a pinata to anybody running for president. Uh, that is exhibit A to me. That, yeah, but it's, uh, it should Joe Biden is running for president. You should never accept it in Munich. Well, uh, it is what it is. Yeah. Well, it doesn't mean it's right. Absolutely not. So if he runs for president and Bernie Sanders run for president, those were the top two in recent polls. Right. Those were the, the two that... Um, got the most votes as far as we asked Democrats or the poll asked Democrats who they would vote for. And Biden was number one and Bernie Sanders number They've got two. the best name recognition on the Democratic side. All yeah. right. Uh, Kamala Harris seems to have the most momentum behind her. Uh, meanwhile, uh, 713 three here in New York City on President's Day. Big story out of Washington. Andrew McCabe making this stunning claim about Rod Rosenstein. The deputy attorney general offered to wear a wire into the White House. He was not joking. He was absolutely serious. Well, our next guest, the former Clinton strategist, calls that, quote, unrestrained abuse of power. He'll explain next. Uh, Post Colin Kaepernick uh, just settled his grievance with the NFL. Reportedly, he could give uh, 80 million reasons uh, to end his national anthem protest. My sense is he gets the money. The attorney general offered to wear a wire into the White House. He said, I never get searched when I go into the White House. I could easily wear a recording device. They wouldn't know it was there. Now, he was not joking. He was absolutely serious. Wow. Fired FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe, caught lying three times and speaking out about an alleged plot to secretly record the president in hopes of removing him from office. Mark Penn, former advisor to both Bill and Hillary Clinton, joins us now to react. Mark, normally we have you in to talk about polling data and trends, but you were all part of that impeachment uh, process with President Clinton. And what do you think about the way this one's playing out, especially what we learned last night? Well, <clears throat> we're learning more and more exactly how we wound up with another two years of Russia investigation and a special counsel. What happened was Rod Rosenstein and Andrew McCabe were ticked off that James Comey was fired. And that firing triggered then this discussion of firing the president, uh, maybe using the 25th Amendment maybe getting cabinet members, maybe ousting a duly elected president. And you know what? They decided instead to hire a special counsel and put this investigation with a special counsel, with their friends, out of touch of the normal course of things, deliberately and with a for without any event justifying it. There was no crime. Mark, he says, oh, wait a second. President Trump said, go easy on Michael Flynn. He said, wait a second. Uh, there, you know, you said some nice things about Vladimir Putin. You mocked the investigation. He listed four or five things. None of them were convincing to launch the 25th Amendment. Well, not only that, but McCabe and the others had all testified before Congress that there was no investigation that had been interfered with in any way. And remember, McCabe is acting head of the FBI. He can't claim that he's been tossed out of power when he's actually the acting head. There's no predicate for the right. actions that he took other than the fact that he wanted this investigation to go forward, to get rid of the president, that they couldn't use the 25th Amendment, so right. they used the special counsel instead. Let me just say what the president tweeted after watching this. Wow, so many lies by now disgraced acting FBI Director Andrew McCabe. He was fired for lying, and now his story gets even more deranged. He and Rod Rosenstein, who was hired by Jeff Sessions, another beauty, looked like they were planning a very illegal act and got caught. Hey, Rod Rosenstein should start packing up. I don't know if he takes off on President's Day, but how they could even look the president in the eye right now? Well, we have a new attorney general coming in, I guess, tomorrow. Uh, and hopefully uh, the Rosenstein will be exiting almost the same day. But remember, did Rosenstein lie? He said he was joking. McCabe, 
who was uh, fired for lying, says he wasn't joking. And so none of these stories actually yeah. are really fully vetted at this point, and they're going to be, have to be called to testify under oath. And you know what? The S Senator uh, Lindsey Graham said that from Munich yesterday. Enough, because these guys disagree with each other. It's not even about the president right now. Mark, uh, always love your insight. Thanks again. Thank you. Meanwhile, straight ahead, a man. Chris saying the U.S. government has not yet seized a single penny from him. Jeffrey Lightman telling CNN, quote, there's a better chance of Mr. Cruz paying for the wall. El Chapo will be sentenced to life behind bars this summer. Let's look at your headlines. Steve, send it to you. All right, Jillian, thank you. A Michigan weightlifter being hailed a hero after he rushed into action to help save a man trapped underneath a rolled over Jeep. Last Thursday, Ryan Belcher ran outside his workplace after hearing a big crash. He found a two-car collision with a man trapped under the Jeep Cherokee pleading, screaming for help. Belcher, using just his body, pushed the two-ton SUV off the man before medics arrived on the scene. And joining us right now with his incredible story of rescue is Ryan Belcher, owner of Absolute Power. Join us today from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ryan, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Okay. Uh, great to talk to you. We saw this story Thursday. So uh, take us back to Thursday. You're, you're at your place of employment. You hear something big. You open the door. What'd you see? Yeah, I was getting ready to go home, actually. And then um, I heard a big smash. And then as I came outside, um, I actually heard a lady yelling, get the kids away. So my first instinct was to come save the kids that were there. And um, when I got there, there was luckily there was no children, but there was a man. He was he was stuck. Half of his body was stuck underneath his underneath his Jeep. And uh, at first, when I first approached the vehicle, there was a good four men there, and they were all trying to move this vehicle. And I seen it wasn't happening, and I figured, w what a better time now, yeah. you know, to, to use what I know I can actually do. So, so the guy was Ryan. The I'm guy sorry. was the guy was half in, half out of the jeep that was flipped over. Yes, sir. His lower body was underneath, the, oh. was still inside the vehicle. His legs were, and then his upper body was smashed up against a speed limit sign. Half. Oh so. man. So you got these four other guys, they were already there, they were doing their best, they could not help the guy. What did you do? I just jumped right in. I, I seen a window that was broken out in the back of the vehicle and I knew if I could swing the vehicle in a certain direction, I can free him from that pole. So I just stuck my arms in and just, I just, I, I don't know, I just grabbed it, lifted it up and started pushing. And all I heard was, that's enough, we can get him. And I don't know how far, maybe three feet. And <sighs> It just it felt it was crazy. It was just that's the feeling I felt. <laughs> well, man, oh man, you were the guy. I mean, obviously you have the strength of more than four men because you were able to do what they were unable to do. You are a weightlifter. You you uh, practice five times a week. Uh, according to one of the papers out there, uh, you have squatted in the past 950 pounds. You've bench pressed 530 pounds, and you've deadlifted 800 pounds. But Ryan. A Jeep Cherokee weighs 4,514 pounds. How'd you do that? Where'd that come from? Uh, where it came from, I, I, I couldn't tell you, but I just I knew one thing is that I didn't want this man to be stuck, and I wanted to get him out of there. So if that's what it gave me the power, I, I, you know, I would do it again. I'd save somebody else again if that's what it meant. Oh, man. Well, you were in the right place at the right time for that man. I know that they immediate, once they were able to drag him out, uh, because you lifted the car up, uh, they took him to the hospital, and uh, you got to talk to him yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, as actually I did. I met him and his family yesterday. It was pretty emotional. I didn't know that the story was as, not this, not the story, but his story was as deep as what it was. He um, had some internal bleeding. Um, he was crushed. One of his sides were crushed, so they had a bleeding tube on him. And the, about six nurses stopped me in the hallway and told me thank you. That if it wasn't for me, then he, he probably wouldn't be alive today. <sighs> What did he tell you? He told me the same thing in tears, and so, and it was it was pretty emotional for me. I cried as well, right along with him when he told me that, and he he was just so thankful. He just kept telling, kept calling me Hawk, <laughs> Hawk. I'm so thankful, Hawk. Thank you so much, and we just cried together, you know. And then by the end of the time, we were having a great time, joking. He's in great spirits. He's ready to walk. He said, Hawk, when I start walking, I'm gonna be at your gym. You're gonna be walking with me, <laughs> and it felt great. Why'd you do it? You, you didn't have to do it. You did it. Yeah, I didn't have to do it, sir, but I had to do it. You know, that's how I feel. I did, it just had to be done. I would hope that if I was ever in a situation like that, that somebody would help me. You know, he's got five children at home. I got Ugh. two. 
and not to be able to make it home to my children and them seeing that would would be devastated so what a story uh, Ryan Belcher, hero weightlifter, owner of Absolute Power out there. If you need uh, folks watching out there who need a, a good guy to work out, he's the man right there. You are a hero, buddy. Thank you so much. That was great. All right. Thanks for joining us today from Ann Arbor in Michigan. Thank good you. Job. All right. That's great. All right. Uh, we're going to switch gears. 730 here in New York City. Actor Jesse Smollett from Empire claims he was assaulted in a racially motivated attack. But there are new questions about what exactly happened. Was it a hoax or was it a hate crime? David Webb says the case has sounded like a hoax to him from the start. He'll join us live next. Plus, his singer may actually be the MVP of the NBA All-Star Game. Of them. Bodybuilders, obviously. Released without charges in Chicago. There are reports this case could actually go now to a grand ju jury. Police have reached out to Smollett and his legal team asking to talk to him again. The attorneys deny the allegations. Let's bring in David Webb, Fox News contributor, host of Reality Check with David Webb on Fox Nation. He's joining us. He's Mr. Lucky. He's down in Miami today <laughs> on this uh, President's Day. David. Uh, Good morning, guys. The, you know, when uh, Jesse Smollett came out and told the story, he made it very clear he was a victim of hate crime. And now the more this, this story has unraveled, it sounds more like it was a hoax. Well, I mean, look, let's be, as we always are, fair. We haven't gotten a final determination nope. on what happened. But from day one of this story, there were a lot of missing parts. Uh, there were too many conflicts, lack of video evidence where there were cameras. Uh, some other things that we can now talk about a little bit more openly from the investigation and my sources. For instance, do you stand there if someone's trying to put a rope, or in this case, a clothesline around your neck, they, you would be struggling. That means there would be ligature marks. That would have been reported. Uh, the fact that he wouldn't turn over the phone records, and when he did, he redacted them. Uh, you start adding this together, and new things that are developing in this story, like the fact that they found ripped up magazines at the brother's apartment, which police are now investigating to see if they're tied to the threatening letter sent. Uh, that's the component of the legal side. There's a political side, guys. You have Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and Tim Scott, the Republican, who sponsored, co sponsored a bill on anti anti-lynching. They then go and use this bill, and I'm putting this on Harris and Booker. Scott has been silent on this uh, for the most part. And they go and they use this to push this anti-lynching bill in the Senate. So there's a political component. There's the hoax. There's the media coverage. There's Ellen, all the others that jumped up. And yet they are eerily silent now because this is coming apart. Why do you think he would do this, go to such extreme measures if he is guilty of making up a story? Well, the why we won't know till the investigation comes out. I mean, we can go into conjecture, but I don't really want to go there. What I'm looking at is how the reaction of the people and the country are to this. This is, was an attempt by the left to paint Trump supporters. You know, the MAGA hat as another racist symbol. We've heard that come out of congressmen's mouths. We've heard that come out of elected officials' mouths. And those on the left that want to paint anyone who's on the right and, by the way, also a Trump supporter or not for that matter, as a racist. It's about pushing a narrative. And there's another component of this which is not being talked about. It's not about the, the suits versus the boots, but Chicago PD and, and you know cops out there, many of them watching now, they don't like being made fools of. They have a job to do and a hard job every day when they go out the door. And some of my sources have said one of the hardest things for this is they're trying to do their jobs in Chicago. They've got a political stripe. It's a mayoral uh, agency. Uh, you've got the command and you've got the precinct level. And they're wasting resources where they could have been using to, I don't know, deal with something involving so, a child, a grandmother, or David, whoever in the community. He could be looking at three years in prison if he did this. And the resources they used because he was a famous act or semi famous actor away from other so called uh, less important crimes because the people involved weren't famous. And think about this you know, we're like, uh, in many ways, we're uh, like a smoldering fire of racial tension at points. This is the last thing America needs is to have something come out that could sponsor riots across the country. But something like this, someone throwing bleach out there, this is MAGA country, using the N-word. This is no small plot and, uh, you know, and scam. This could be, this could have been huge. 
it's a compendium of behavior when you look at it. The information, we've got the Covington, Kentucky kids. We've got all these different instances where the reality doesn't match the narrative. There's a blowback effect, though, Brian. When it comes to the country, we as Americans are starting to see this. We're starting to see that these, these incidents are being used to gin up Hope hatred. So. Where there's real incidents, we'll deal with them. In America, we do. We reject it and we respond to it. So I hope Americans take the lesson here of also doing a real reality check on what racism is and the false charges because this is not who we are. Well, regarding this case, there are still a lot of questions that we need answers to. The Chicago police are being relatively tight-lipped about it, uh, and there are some leaks from different sides. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly what happened, but nonetheless, a lot of people are scratching their heads what is happening in Chicago. David, thank you very Thanks, much David. for joining us live today. Sure thing. And then the president will be in Miami uh, later, you know, 21 minutes before the top of the hour. Hey, Jillian. Hey, good morning. So we're following morning. a number of stories, starting with this. Six illegal immigrants are under arrest, accused of running a multi-state drug trafficking ring. They allegedly smuggled meth and cocaine between Texas, Georgia, and the Carolinas. The suspects have ties to a Mexican drug cartel considered to be rivals with the cartel formerly run by El Chapo. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio blaming Amazon for pulling out of a deal to build a new New York headquarters. The bottom line is this is an example of an abuse of corporate power. They had an agreement with the people of New York City, but Amazon just took their ball and went home. The mayor clarifying $3 billion offered in tax breaks would happen only after the city saw jobs and revenue. He was replying to criticism, most notably from Democratic Socialist Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. So what might the Green New Deal look like in real life? Consider this. According to the Wall Street Journal, the city of New York pays more than $1,900 to install LED light bulbs at each of its city-run apartments. Well, that's a total of $33 million throughout the city. The article says that's because of labor costs and green energy requirements, similar to the proposed Green New Deal. The big winner at the NBA All-Star Game may have been Anthony Hamilton. And the rock is red in 64. I will send it back to you. Dude, it was, start. It might as well have been the Globetrotters. <laughs> I've never seen a they game like that. They are fun to watch. They don't even try to play defense. <laughs> I know. I mean, <laughs> but all the tricks that they do. I, I know. We used to have to go watch the Globetrotters for that. <laughs> all right. Best of the Thank best. Thank you very much. Okay, Democrats say President Trump is making up the crisis at the border. Simply no emergency there. And unquestionably not a national emergency. All hands on deck to refuse this president. Well, one angel mother who was in the Rose Garden for the president's announcement says it's absolutely an emergency and she's going to join us live. And instead of pressing her on the policy, the media is helping Kamala Harris pick out her clothes. I'm not kidding. How does that look? Is that what we can expect in 2020? A group of reporters hitting Kamala Harris's campaign trail this weekend, but instead of pressing her on policy, they helped her pick out her clothes instead. Oh, yeah. That's it. <laughs> wow. Uh, so is this what we can expect on the 2020 trail? Uh, the media helping dress everybody? Let's ask Beverly Hallberg. She's uh, president of District Media Group. So we know this reporter, uh, Maeve Reston of CNN, was out there helping around with jackets. Is there a problem with that? I think that there is because one of the main aspects of being a political reporter is that as you interact with a candidate day to day on the campaign trail, you want to make sure that you remain objective. So what you see in this video is you do have three reporters there, one that you just mentioned who helped pick out this sequence jacket. The other two reporters were laughing in the background and all three of them tweeted this out showing that they didn't even think that this was a problem. This obviously crosses the line and I think in many ways gives more credibility to conservatives and presidents. Trump who think that there is bias in the media. Well, Beverly, is this more of here we go again? Because remember the media fawned all over Michelle Obama. They wanted to know who designed all of her clothes, where she was going to shop. 
all, she was in the headlines and front page of our front cover of so many different magazines. And then you have Melania Trump, who's clearly a fashionista and dresses beautifully, but the, she gets so much negative coverage about her clothes. Is it because just Republican versus Democrat? Is this what we're going to expect in 2020? I think that we can. You find that when it comes to women who are conservative or Republican, they often are not praised by the liberal media. You can take a look even at Nikki Haley, let's say, um, someone who made great strides in her political career and probably will. You don't see her in Marie Claire and other magazines nope. being labeled as someone who's overcome. And I would even say, think about